Hey guys, at BV Matson here, and we're gonna get the clutch plates installed on the 1972 CL350. Got all my parts laying out, everything I need. And first, I'm just gonna do a quick inspection on all the different plates. They actually look like they're in really good condition. So I'm feeling great about that compared to some images that I've seen online. So uh, let's get to work on getting the, uh, see, what would that be? That would be the right side of the engine put back together. All right, first things first, we need to make sure that each one of these plates isn't warping at all, all right? So what I've got is my granite slab and uh, I'm just gonna go through a quick test on each one of these to make sure that we're good to go on these. Um, you know, these all look really, really flat upon kind of first inspection. So I'm gonna drop it and then I'm gonna drop it. This is flat, beautiful. So I'm gonna go through this process and check each and every single one of these clutch plates. Should be pretty exciting. I'm not anticipating seeing anything wonky. Yeah, just take your time, inspect each one. All right, these all checked out really, really well. Um, so basically all I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go through and just look for any crazy signs of wear on these things. Now see, you can still clearly see the kind of the indents on this. Um, take a look at these pictures from one of the common motor photo uh, videos. Um, this is not always the case. So this is really encouraging to me that uh, these clutch plates or these friction rings are actually in good operational order. Yep, I'm gonna say I'm in good shape compared to these examples of worn out friction rings. So I'm feeling good about my clutch plates or the friction rings. Now I'm gonna go through each of the steels and just make sure that I get any kind of, you know, residue off of these. Um, these all look really actually pretty damn good. Again, just giving each one of these rings a nice wipe cleaning off any kind of dirt and debris that may be on them. There shouldn't be very much, except maybe some dust from them just sitting out. But like here, this one, you can see it's not burned, all right? Um, it's just kind of tarnished a little bit. So I'm just gonna give these all a good wipe. I mean, again, compared to all the photos that I've seen, um, these are totally operational and still in good shape. So I'm gonna work my way through all of these and uh, go back to time-lapse mode because this uh, isn't exactly making for thrilling video content. Yeah, just take your time, look at each one, and make sure nothing's amiss. All right, with our test done on our plates, we can go ahead and get this basket installed on here. Take a look at that. This is actually really clean, not a ton of corrosion, not a, you know, it's, it's not crazy. I've seen a bunch of pictures that are absolutely terrible. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna drop a little bit of assembly grease uh, around this, I actually just put it on here for good effect. All right, throw some assembly lube on there, wipe my hand, and then what we can do is just insert this. It doesn't matter which way it goes, uh, just make sure that you get the cogs in the wheel lined up, and we'll push that thing right on there, just like that. Now what we can do is start to add our plates. Now, get yourself some sort of a situation where you can get messy with some oil. Got my engine oil here, I've laid some of that down, and what you wanna do is you wanna put in your plates uh, wet, as they say. So dip your ring, just lay it in, in, in oil, just like this. Again, it doesn't matter which way that these necessarily go. You're just gonna line up the tabs uh, with the slots and push that on. Again, you're always going to start with a friction ring and then follow that with a steel, okay? So we're just gonna shove that on and then push that on. And then I'm gonna grab my friction ring. I'm gonna dip that into oil and then I'm gonna put this on. <laughs> and a, a very repetitive uh, task. You just wanna make sure that you are alternating. Oh, everything, you don't need to dip, obviously, the steels because um, your friction rings are already covered <laughs> in oil, so whatever. Um, and then just start installing uh, all these parts. It should all slide together pretty painlessly. Just don't forget to put this thing together wet. 
We're making progress, man. Moving right through things. Feels great to be making such progress. All right, here's our cover plate. All ready to rock and roll. All right, pretty straightforward for posts. And we're going to drop this plate back on. I've got this outer ring is oiled, so I'm good there. It's just gonna actually set in there just like that. And the next thing you grab are those uh, kind of bolts with the springs. It's a bolt with a washer and a spring. So you're gonna go ahead and drop your spring in. I did not see that there's a difference in these springs. Uh, remember when we were taking the valves apart, um, those springs, there was a certain one that was down and there was a certain one you know, that was up with like a tighter coil. I don't see that with these at all. So we're just gonna go around. I'm gonna lightly uh, get these going. You just, again, you just put the spring on and then you push this and then you just thread this back on there. It's pretty straightforward. Uh, also, I checked the manual. Uh, the manual does not indicate a, a specific torque specification for this. It just says tight. Um, you know, tighten, I think is what it says. So I'm just gonna put these into space. Um, you know, I imagine, you know, a torque probably is pretty tough to do because of the spring. Uh, the spring is actually putting a bunch of outward force on it. So I can see why like a torque wouldn't really make a heck of a lot of good. So anyway, I'll put my ratchet into uh, forward mode, forward mode, and uh, I'm gonna evenly go around and uh, tighten up the basket. And here we are, I'm just gonna go kind of hand tight on these, not gonna go crazy, but just get it kind of tight and snug on all of these. Don't go crazy with the tightening, because again, you can definitely risk, um, you know, <laughs> stripping these things out and you don't wanna do that. So just kind of hand tight is all you really wanna do. And then we're gonna be in business on getting that side cover in place, guys. There we go, a bada bing, a bada boom. I absolutely love it. This is fan freaking tastic. Um, let's get our side cover and let's get this thing buttoned up. So in preparation for putting that side cover on, I've got my white lithium grease in my hand and I'm just gonna spray down really well both sides of my side cover gasket. All right, really straightforward. Just in case I do have to get back in here, this is gonna make getting the gasket off a lot easier. Awesome tip from again, common motor. There it is, I feel good about that. Let's go back to the bike and get this thing in position. All right, I'm gonna grab my gasket. My surfaces are clean, and I'm gonna go ahead and position this. That lithium grease definitely helps, uh, you know, just kind of keep things in place while you're going. One thing to note, you're gonna have a dowel over here and a dowel right here. I need to give you a little bit better look at this dowel. Dowel right here, and then there's a dowel there. That's gonna be kind of your alignment marks. And then we can grab our cover. Now I'm really happy with how the cover came out. This thing was an absolute nightmare and this thing cleaned up. Uh, take a look at this uh, before picture. I'm not gonna lie, <laughs> this thing took some work to bring back from the dead. Yeah, like that night and day difference. You can see me, hey guys, how you doing? Uh, very, very cool. So again, I'm gonna go back in time and I am going to go and get all of my pins. Here's all my pins for my cover. I believe it's oriented this way. Yeah, here's the, the Kickstarter. I've got all my new Allen heads kind of pump, put right into here so that I can easily start to transfer those onto the bike. Uh, first things first, um, you also don't want to forget this little washer, all right? I forgot this on my CB350. Uh, that I restored last year, and it was like literally one of the last pieces in the box, and I went on a mad hunt trying to figure out where the hell this thing went, and it actually slips onto your, your uh, Kickstarter shaft. So I'm just gonna lube this up with a little bit of assembly oil, just like that, I'm gonna slide that on, give it a little spinny spinny, just like that, maybe just a little bit more actually on the shaft itself, 
can't hurt, be liberal with your assembly oil, okay? And then the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna position this bad boy onto the bike, man. <laughs> oh man, guys, this is, uh, this is amazing, actually. I'm so excited to be doing this, finally. Just line this up, get it over on your, on your Kickstarter, and the thing should kind of slide right into position, your dowels. Again, they might hang you up just a little bit, but it should rock right into uh, where it needs to be. So just be patient. You might have to give her a little wallop with a rubber hammer, um, but uh, you really shouldn't. It, it should go on pretty straightforward. All right, just gave that thing a, a firm tap and she went right home. Absolutely love it. Next thing, absolutely do not forget the anti-seize lubricant on these different bolts. Don't want to forget it. I'm going to actually just flip my board around and just let's do some painting, okay? Let's just paint the ends of each ones of our bolts while it's in the cardboard. This makes it really nice and easy. Uh, gets it, and it also kind of saves some mess. This is kind of nice technique. I literally just created it, guys. I'm going to go copyright this technique um, for for expediting applying uh, anti seize lubricant um, to your nuts and bolts. Again, look at that overspray. Brian don't care. Brian just goes for it and just uh, you know gets it all good to go. So got my anti seize on all of my bolts. Let's orient my thing just like this and let's start inserting. So we've got one right here, get that loosely started. And we're gonna work our way around. Again, I'm just kind of getting those first few threads installed. Now again, these, these are uh, varying lengths. So refer, you know, to the documentation um, that comes along with things. But I love these cardboard cutouts because I mean, it basically eliminates um, any kind of error that you can make in doing this, we're gonna go ahead and get this bottom one put in. There's another one on the bottom, just like that. Another one on the bottom. <laughs> and two more to go before we call this done. All right, well, not done, because we gotta tighten all this stuff up too, which is gonna take, take a little while. But we've got all these in position, and now we're ready to grab our Allen wrench and start tightening up these pieces. Um, yeah, this is uh, pretty awesome. I'm, I'm so excited to finally be to this point. So uh, uh, this is fan-freaking-tastic. I'm gonna just go ahead and start tightening these things up. Oh, and you know what? While I'm tightening these things up, let me show you the awesome documentation that Common Motor includes with their bolt kits. Uh, I absolutely love it. Uh, oh, one more note before I do that too. Like, don't go just around and around when you're tightening these things. Um, you know, kind of do a crisscross pattern. You know, get one to kind of seat and then move to the other side. You want to do this nice and evenly. Don't just go da -da 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 all the way around. Um, kind of, you know, spread your actions out just a little bit. I was on one side, then I'm going to go to the other side. So anyway, hey, let me uh, show you that documentation because it's freaking handy. Um, I absolutely love it. And I, I'm going to keep those things on, on hand for any kind of future reference uh, that I may need. And here's what I'm talking about. In the engine kits, or the, the bolt kits that you get from Common Motor, not only do they tell you exactly which bolts go where, they have real life-sized lengths indicated here by letter. So no matter what you're working on, you can just go and say, oh, I need a D. Oh, and then here's a C. And you can just get the bolts out, lay them right onto this, and uh, tells you exactly what sizes it is. I mean, this is an amazing little resource that they that they put together. It goes through that whole engine bolt kit. So uh, thank you, Common Motor, for putting together something so freaking useful. All right, we're headed for the finish line here on tightening these up. All right, these have all started, and now it's time to just kind of tighten these things up. And again, you want to just go around and around, you know, not in a direct line, and just work your way up. Don't go, you know, crazy tight with these. Um, you know, just a nice snug tug on it um, should do you just fine. Just nice and snug is all you that you're really going for. Um, then just work your way around this thing till you got them all right where you need to be. All right, 
I'm gonna work my way around one last time, give them each one more little snug pull. But I think I'm in good position here with this thing. Oops, I think I'm in good position with it. Feels good, it's gonna look amazing. <laughs> Super excited guys, man, man. Uh, the, the, the progress that I've been able to make here over the last week or so has been incredible. Um, super excited having this engine done is gonna just uh, flip the table on I'm, I'm kind of getting this bike ready to go I'm telling you it's gonna be incredible so um, lots more awesome videos <laughs> well I assume they're awesome I'm assuming that they're that they're useful the feedback has been amazing don't want to get ahead of myself so there we go that bad boy is on it ain't coming off hopefully because you know I think I did my due diligence on uh, putting it all back together. So I think we are in great shape. Look at that scuff, get that scuff off of there. All right guys, that's how you do it. That's how you reassemble that clutch basket and uh, get that side cover on. So looking <laughs> absolutely incredible. Can you guys believe that this engine looked like this before? quite the transformation i mean this thing was trashed i had my doubts but a little bit of time energy elbow grease and we got there feeling pretty good absolutely incredible i'm so pleased uh with going all natural <laughs> on this engine and really putting in the time cleaning 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 sanding 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 i mean look at these side covers absolutely great oh man i'm so excited not a whole ton to do i mean we need to do the uh valve adjustment that'd be great to do right out of the bat right now i've got polishing to do on some covers here like here if i come over to the work table where is it where's all my parts <laughs> all right it's like this one nasty Still got to do half of this. Remember when I did this video a long time ago, just showing uh, aluminum polishing? Yeah, I did the video and I quit. But this one is going to take me a little hot minute, I think, to, to work out some imperfections on. But luckily, that's going to be like one of the last ones that I actually put on because I got to put, you know, the chain on. I got, you know, I got stuff to do there. Um, I'm going to be doing an electronic ignition on this bike. Um, so really, I, I think I just need to put in... Uh, one piece in here that I'm probably gonna hold off on doing a bunch more there. I mean, what am I missing? What am I missing? Valve adjustment, finish up some polishing. <laughs> I mean, this is done. Yeah, putting together the, 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 the points or getting that, that ignition plate. What is that thing called? What is this damn thing called? I can see it in my head. It's right here. What is it? What the hell is it called? Leave me a, I know what it's called. I'm just having a, having a brain lock. Oop, there went my bolt. But anyway, um, that's it, guys. I mean, we are really, really, really close. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments, man. I mean, we've been pushing out some content here uh, over the last few days. And, uh, man, I'm absolutely loving how this is all coming together. So um, pretty soon, it's going to be going back in that bike. <laughs> Absolutely incredible, guys. If you enjoy the videos, please subscribe. Thumbs up those videos that you enjoy. Follow along Instagram and Twitter, at BV Matson. We're making progress on the 1972 CL350. I have no idea what I'm gonna do next. Maybe we'll install those intakes. I, I, I don't know. I gotta sit back, relax, crack a beer, and celebrate the little victories while we can. All right, thanks, guys. See you in the next video.